Well, the uh, Harbor Freight router that I removed from my router table and tried using on my CNC router, it's finally uh, self-destructed. Last time I went to use it, uh, all of a sudden smoke and flames and sparks started coming out of it with a uh, lot of black uh, powder coming out at the same time and this is what happened. You can see pretty much that the uh, armatures are all chewed up, the brushes are all chewed up, the um, the stator there is uh, everything, all the mounts are broken on it, the whole thing uh, kind of shattered apart and um, self-destructed. There you see the uh, housing on it, the bearing mount on the back actually cracked and broke and that also mounted the brushes so um, and more of it broke apart there so you can just imagine what it looked like when that thing went up. Looks like when the uh, bearing broke loose from that housing that uh, the armature started hitting all the wiring in there and that's when all the shorts began and the brushes started going up. But at least I got about 40 hours of use out of it before it self-destructed, so I guess I can't complain. It's only a uh, piece of Chinese junk. Uh, I wanted to um, replace that with a, uh, a CNC spindle, but there just wasn't enough money in, uh, in the budget this month to do that. So I decided to uh, order one of these DeWalt DWP-611s that I've seen online that many people have had good luck with using them on a small CNC router. So this is kind of what I had to go through to retrofit it onto my machine. I picked it up online at homedepot.com for I think it was $107 and they had it shipped to my house about three days later. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's actually a, it seems to be a pretty well-made router using um, all aluminum castings for all the mounts for everything. So I don't think it will self-destruct like the Harbor Freight one did. Plus it comes with a good warranty just in case anything should happen. Um, the, uh, the router also has a couple LEDs on the bottom there. And there's a shaft lock for removing the collet that uh, should make it pretty easy. And then when you look at the collet, the collet actually um, has eight grooves machined in it. So I'm hoping that that will clamp a lot better. Now the trouble was it just, there was no way to make it work with the mount that I had uh, built for the Harper Freight router. So it was time to start making some modifications. Uh, first thing I did is I uh, took it all apart and near the old router mount that I wound up taking out to my shop and uh, hacksawing the end off of it where the router mounted. You can see where the clamp was. And then I took a piece of uh, one inch 6061 aluminum plate that I had and I uh, made up a new mount for it that just is a clamp style mount. And the barrel, I was able to actually use the uh, depth adjustment ring with it too. So that worked out pretty good. And it's just a simple quarter turn of a uh, socket head cap screw to clamp it in place. I really like the fact that this router goes up to 27,000 RPMs and it runs so much smoother and um, better than the old Harbor Freight one did too. I did a quick test cut and found out that the cooling air from the router actually blows out the bottom of the router. So I have to come up with a um, dust hood for this router immediately. I had an old piece of plastic that I decided to cut the hood out of and um, I drew up a quick design and then I decided to try this new little router out cutting it and one thing I found out was it does give a much nicer cut on uh, plastic having the 27,000 RPMs and I was real happy with the, um, the finish that I got. So uh, I think it's going to be a much better router than the one that I had. Um, not as good as a spindle, but someday I'll be able to afford one and upgrade to that. It was real nice having the um, LEDs on the bottom of this router also. You could see exactly uh, where it was cutting and you know, it gave you really good visibility on it. So I cut out the, um, the piece of half inch thick plastic that I used and um, I'm real happy with the finish I came out. It's so much better than uh, using the old router. I guess the bearings were going in that for a while. So to mount this, I just have to um, remove my new router clamp, 
and then this just will slip in and I'm going to use the same mounting holes to kind of hold everything together um, which was the quickest and simplest thing that I could come up with. So uh, putting it together for the first time, the thing, everything seemed to fit well and the router was able to go right down through everything. So I'm happy with that. And the other thing I'm happy with is I can use that depth adjustment on my uh, CNC router and the vacuum hose was a perfect fit also. So I decided I was going to use the um, same filter bag type skirt that I used on my last hood that worked out really well. So I went back and I drilled some holes in the plastic to mount some self-tapping screws and at the same time I cut a piece of um, polyethylene just to wrap around to keep the uh, filter material from being sucked up in the vacuum in the front. Um, this was just an old dust collector bag that I'm cutting up and using over and over again for, you know, applications like this. So I just cut a strip that actually had a nice seam folded over on it to fit around the, uh, the shield there. And then I just went back and I put some slits in the material like I had done on the last hood. And then just had to punch some holes using a leather punch and mount the uh, filter material around the plastic um, housing. So everything fit together nice and I was real happy with the way it came out. Now on the back of it I've got to be able to open and close the flap to get it in place easily so what I wound up doing there was just uh, I had some self-adhesive velcro that I put in there so I could just um, use the velcro to lock it in place once everything was mounted. So now it's just a matter of um, just slipping it in place around the old original mount and um, wrapping the filter material around the back and using the velcro to hold that tight. Then putting the new mount on there and using a little bit longer socket head cap screws to go through and lock everything together. It was a, um, a real simple solution that actually only took a couple minutes to uh, cut out and make. So uh, I hope it works as good as the last one and I'll soon find out. So with everything back together now and the um, vacuum all hooked up, I was uh, all ready to give it a try out for the first time. And I just uh, decided to do a couple of quick cuts with the vacuum turned on and it work, seems to work 100%. Actually, it works a lot better than the last one, I think because there's a lot less uh, area in it for the vacuum to try to draw the uh, sawdust in. And it may even be that the uh, downdraft from the router helps it out. The only thing left to do is to cut the 8-foot cord off from the router and put a new socket on. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.